Hey everybody, Day Really here. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Hakuoki Kyoto Wins. We are along Susumu Yamazaki's route. We are right after the part where Ito and his men chose to leave. So we're talking to Saito and Toto before they leave. There was just way too much Saito route getting out of the way in uh, Yamazaki's route. Darn it. Alright, well anyway, let's continue on with that. You can just sit back, relax, and let me read you a story. They turned around with reserved expressions. <laughs> well, shoot. Looks like you found us. Oh, did you want to be left alone? I can go. No, no, of course not. I, uh, wanted to talk to you, too. Good. I imagined we'd see you before we left. If you have something to say, say it. R right I just wanted to hear it from you. Why are you leaving the Shinsengumi? Why, huh? Hmm. He scrunched up his face and scratched nervously at the side of his nose. Well, Ito and I are from the same school. He's my senior, obviously. He joined the Shinsengumi at first because I invited him. So, I feel like I'm kind of obligated to stick with him, you know? I guess that's it. No, there was more to it than that. You said it's better in a different scene. Heisuke had always struck me as kind, so it was no surprise that he felt he couldn't abandon Ito. But that means you'll leave everyone else behind. You might not ever get to see them again. I'm not really one of Ito's followers, I guess you might say, but I was and am an imperialist. It wasn't like I'd grown up wanting to work under the Shogunate or something. There we go. And considering what's going on with the serum, it just kind of seems like working for somebody like the Guardians of the Imperial Tomb is a better fit for me than working for the Shogunate. I couldn't really think of anything to say, so I kept my mouth shut. After a moment, he continued. I wanted to just stay here and screw around and have fun with the guys. I mean, we've been together for quite a while, right? His gaze drifted off into the distance, and his profile seemed almost heartbreakingly lonely. But his mouth was a hard line. His mind was made up. What about you, Saito? I looked up at him. Joining Ito and his men serves my own ambition. Are you an imperialist too? A leader who hopes to unify his people should be one who overcomes any external threats. If the Shogunate forgets its essential role, which is keeping its people safe by expelling all foreign influence, then I have no reason to work for them. So you're saying that Kondo and Hijikata are wrong? That's right. And because you don't agree with them, you're willing to walk away and never see them again? It can't be helped. In order to go with what I believe in, I mustn't be swayed by emotions. But... I... I wanted them to stay. Is that what I'm supposed to choose? Oh, I have to say I felt betrayed because I'm not after either of these guys, I guess. I don't want to say this, but... Uh, how could you do this to us? We've been together for so long. And now you're just going to abandon us? Oh, Chizuru, why do we have to guilt trip them? Please don't say that. This is hard for us too, alright? The look he gave me nearly broke my heart, and in that moment I suddenly understood how he felt. Oh, I... He was suffering too, perhaps just as much as I was, and yet I'd said such horrible things. No, no, I'm sorry. See ya. Oh! Don't run away! And then he was gone and I was left with my apology still forming on my lips. Heisuke, how could I have been so inconsiderate? I should have known that it was painful for him too. Because we worked together once, now we must always work together. Yes! Because I got attached and you can never leave me ever again. You must be part of my harem forever and ever. You believe that no matter my ambitions, I should remain here for no other reason than some sense of camaraderie. One must master their emotions, or be mastered by them. To let emotion guide my judgment is the beginning of the end. But, but, but can you ignore your feelings so easily? Isn't it hard for you to leave your friends behind? No. If duty requires me to kill a friend, then I will. There can be no hesitation. I don't think I could ever understand that. That's what I love about you, Saito. A man of his word, a man of his duty. Duty is important to you, I know, but... But still... 
Was duty the only function of a member of the Shinsengumi? Did they exist only to fulfill that duty at the exclusion of everything else? That seemed awfully horribly sad. I wanted to speak, to tell Saito how I felt, but I knew that no matter what I said, it would simply slide off him, unacknowledged and unwelcome. Saito, for his part, said nothing. We stood for a moment until he moved toward one of the many blossoming cherry trees covering the temple grounds. And where we get a pretty picture? One of my favorite pictures in the whole game. How many of these blossoms have I seen since I came to Kyoto, I wonder? Cherry blossoms? It must have been my imagination, but I could have sworn that Saito's face, as he looked at the blossoms above him, was... sad. As time passes, things change. The world, people's ideas, even the Shinsengumi. He reached out gently and let a single petal fall onto his palm. For several moments, he simply looked at it. Are... are we changing too? <sighs> he looked up. Our eyes met. We have. Is that why you're leaving? Because we've changed? He didn't answer. He only gazed quietly up at the cherry blossoms. His mind had been made up long ago. There was nothing I could say that would change it now. Even so, that does not mean everything must change. I was surprised. Not by his words, but by the small smile that appeared with them. As times change, and life changes with it, and there are some things which do not change. I believe in there's things that do not change. Things that do not change? Yes. And somehow, that meant he should go with Ito? It didn't make any sense. What Saito believed in was... something else. I didn't know what yet, but I could feel it. So long as he didn't change, so long as he was still the man who could look up at the cherry blossoms and smile, then perhaps it was okay. Even if he was far away, perhaps our hearts could still feel the presence of the other. It was sad to think that he would no longer be nearby, but... Saito, could you give me that petal? Of course. What do you intend to do with it? I won't do anything with it. I just want to... keep it. A reminder of my time with him. That's odd. Here you are, I suppose. Thank you. I'll treasure it. I'm skipping time. And here I choose Yes, I Am Staying for a Guy, and that guy is Yamazaki. This time I stay in my room. And remain in my room. Shimada had told me to stay hidden in the room, so I have to obey what he said. But something is definitely happening outside of this room. My hands wouldn't stop trembling from fear. Yukimura, Yukimura, are you there? I heard my name from the other side of the sliding door. It was a familiar voice. Yamazaki? Yes, I'm here. Oh, you're safe. Don't open the door, just listen. Okay, but Shimada is... I know, but the enemy is still around. Make sure there are no lights in the room. And don't make a sound, no matter what. Got it? Okay. Just as Yamazaki had said, I blew out all the candles in the room. Just then, I could sense the air on the other side of the door change, and it made my arm hair stand. Where is Chizuru Yukimura? Sorry for the bad news. She had already escaped to a safer location. I see. Then get out of my way. No, I can't let you go beyond this point. Don't get in my way, you insect. Ugh. I had heard a giant thud, and the door shook after Yamazaki was thrown. And right after, Yamazaki flew into the room. Gah. Yamazaki! Mm. <laughs> Don't make a sound. Yamazaki stopped me from trying to leave my corner of the room by covering me. Yamazaki and I are in a location where we can't be easily spotted from the hallway. However, I could still sense Kazuma from beyond the door. Well, let's hope he's not looking in this room. If we had moved, even just a little, he would be able to find us. He's not a T-Rex. He can see if we don't move. In order to save ourselves, 
Yamazaki and I had no choice but to stay completely silent and hidden. <sighs> the air was so tense that we had to stop breathing. I wasn't sure how long we'd been in the room. Eventually, Kazuma seemed like he grew bored, walking away as the sound of his footsteps grew further and further away. Did he go? Yes. Even though my voice was filled with relief, Yamazaki seemed much more unsettled. Damn it. I couldn't do anything. No, you protected me. It was just sheer luck that he didn't come in. But I don't even have the slightest bit of strength necessary to stall him, let alone defeat him. If only I was strong. I want more power. Don't say that. It comes at a price. After it seemed as though Kazuma was no longer anywhere to be seen, it helped Yamazaki stand. He still seemed a little weak, his legs wobbling from being thrown earlier. You go somewhere safe while you still can. Find your comrades. No, I can't leave you behind, Yamazaki. Don't worry about me. But you're... You're my comrade too. Well, because you're my comrade too, Yamazaki. I can't leave my comrade behind. I have a sense of duty as well. I see. You consider me your comrade. Yes, you're protecting me. You're very dear to me. Thank you. Well, I guess that rather than running away and risking running into him again, it may be safer for us to stay here. Yeah, exactly, in a place he's already searched and probably won't come back to. Yes, you may be right. However, what is the situation like outside? Yamazaki peeked outside the room from a window, but we couldn't hear any more swords clashing. However, we could hear footsteps approaching. We're not out of the woods yet, huh? Yukimoto, hurry, to the back. But your injury, Yamazaki! I'm fine. You hurry up and... As I was shuffling to hide myself in the corner, I saw someone jumping into the room. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, Yukimoto, I'm so glad you're safe. Inoue! Inoue took a look at both me and Yamazaki, and he sighed in relief. Oh, are you hurt? I'm fine, but Yamazaki... Oh, you are protecting her, eh, Yamazaki? Thank you so much, Yamazaki. Are you badly injured? I'm managing. Where is he? Thanks to everyone's hard work, we were able to drive them away successfully. And I got bored of searching. I see. It makes me happier to hear it. If your injury is not fatal, do you think you can report to Toshi? Understood. I'm going to report on your safety to the commander. Please remain in this room. Okay. Yamazaki and Inoue left my room and headed for Hijikata. What was most concerning to me was Yamazaki's perplexed expression before Inoue arrived. He looked almost... upset. I mean, he was up against Kazuma, which was no normal feat, especially for a human. Yeah, anybody would have trouble against him. And skipping time? And here again, I'm sure they understand. And once again, decided to stay home. This time, I went to help. <laughs> and this time, confirm with Hijikata. Make sure he's absolutely positively sure he wants to trust me with this. I wanted to confirm the sliver of doubt I had in myself, so I peeked back in around the sliding door. And there she goes. Hey, Yamazaki, Shimada. Yes, sir. Did you call? Aha, uh -huh. so now I get to actually see that he, uh, had these two follow me. I sent Yukimura to deliver Saito a letter. Keep an eye on her, but don't let her see you. If anything happens, make sure she's okay. Understood. Hopefully, if something does happen, it'll just be some idiots trying to get to Miura or something. There's some dangerous guys after her, though. If the demons show up, just get her back here immediately. Yes, sir. We're off. Yeah, get going. Oh, maybe that meant he didn't quite fully trust me yet. Oh, you heard all of his words. It doesn't mean he doesn't trust you. It's just that you're in danger. He's trying to ensure your safety, girl. Of course I was a little disheartened to hear that, but maybe that was the best I could ask for. I pulled myself together, made sure I had everything on my person, and I left to deliver Saito's letter. First I slipped the letter into my kimono, 
and I double-checked to make sure it wouldn't fall out. Next, I carefully unfolded the map Hijikata had drawn out for me. Hijikata placed enough faith in me to get the job done, so I had to be sure I did things correctly. Okay, so I go this way on the street. According to this map, it looks like I have a long way to go. I better hurry or it's going to be evening by the time I get there. Maybe I should run there. I wanted to ensure I take all safety precautions, of course, but... I was overwhelmed with a sense of duty, to the point that I couldn't help but feel running would ensure I'd complete the task on time. And skipping. Why did they give us different text for that? And we have some more different text here, because I guess since we're more along Saito's route this time. Now that the job was done, though, I wasn't quite sure what I should do next. Oh, never mind, skip that. <sighs> Heading home. As I was running toward the compounds, I knew I had to be conscious of my surroundings. I knew, too, that Yamazaki and Shimada weren't too far behind me. I felt bad knowing they were responsible for me, and I stopped in my tracks. Um, Yamazaki? Shimada? Are you guys there? Oh, I don't- I feel like we shouldn't have said that. You should have just let the guys do their job. No response but I knew they were here. And I'm sorry. All because I wanted to be of use to you guys. I put you through so much more than you would have wanted. It's not like that. I'm just following the commander's orders. It's not a matter of you causing any trouble. That's right. Saito said so earlier. This mission was a no-brainer because it was you. Do you guys really think so? Yes, or at least I think so. Let's see... Thank you in advance. How is this advance? Thank you for everything you've been doing up until now. I do appreciate it too. You two have always supported me, and you've helped me at every turn. I have a feeling I'll continue to cause you two to work hard in the future as well. So, thank you in advance. I feel like I should have gotten points with Shimada there too. I've never once thought about what you do as extra work for me. I accept your thanks, though. And please, do what you must. We are comrades now, so don't hold back for our sake. He's right. Thank you in advance for this opportunity. Okay. Yukimura, I have a favor to ask you. Sure, what is it? I want you to forget that we've come out in front of you like this. Normally, our job is to protect you from the shadows. That's right. How dumb of me. <laughs> I understand. Let's just say I went straight back. I'll be on my way then. Alright, thank you. Go straight home without any worries. Alright. I ran toward the compounds. Yeah, they broke orders for that. Jeez, what are you doing to these poor guys? All the gloom sinking my heart felt as if it had been blown away. And skipping time again. And now we're in Chapter 5, December 1867, so... Now we are finally officially on Yamazaki's route, and we'll actually finally get a significant amount of material for him. Well, as much as there is in the game, at least. December 1867. The restoration of imperial rule had removed the political power from the shogunate back to the jurisdiction of the imperial palace. The Satsuma and Choshu formed a coalition to assume leadership under this new union. Thus, a new government had started to form. The Satsuma Choshu began to gain momentum, going as far as to occupy Kyoto with their troops. Not only had the shogunate been stunted politically, but now their forces, too, had nowhere to turn. Although the shogunate commanded a large number of forces, the imperial court dominated any substantial clout once held by the shogunate. It was clear the shogunate was being cornered into a situation from which they couldn't easily recover. Between those attempting to uphold the values of the past, and those fighting to move Japan into the future. No one knew which side would prevail. End of year 1867 Several skirmishes have been occurring at various cities, including Edo, between the Shogunate and the Satsuma Choshu. In an attempt to gain a stronghold in a crucial area, the Shinsengumi was tasked with guarding the Fushimi Magistrate. However, it was as though fate were laughing at our attempt at protecting the Magistrate. Kondo had an assassination attempt on his life. After meeting with the Aizu in the city, 
He was ambushed on his return to the magistrate. Kondo's gunshot wound was on his right shoulder. The bullet pierced clean through him, shattering the bone which required more treatment than I could have given him at the compounds. I was sweeping up the common room when... Oh, Yukimura, are you still awake at this hour? Oh, Sanin. Did you have any business here? If you're going to use this room, I'll leave. Rather... Oh, shoot, I'm skipping. I don't know why... I forgot to skip. The common room was practically deserted, and the mood was somber as we listened for updates. As I left the common room, I walked past the courtyard to head to my room. I found Yamazaki standing alone in contemplation. He gazed longingly into the sky, as if searching for answers amongst the stars. He didn't seem to notice as I walked closer to him. This seemed out of character for Yamazaki. I softly spoke to him, as to not alert him. Good evening, Yamazaki. Um, is everything okay? As I'd spoken out, Yamazaki finally turned to acknowledge me nearby. He glanced in my direction, and his expression remained stern as he looked into my eyes. Oh, nothing. Please excuse me. With that said, Yamazaki walked off. I wonder if Yamazaki's all right. I was, of course, concerned about him, but tonight, there wasn't much room in my heart for concern. I rushed back to my room. December 20th, 1867 It was decided that Kondo and Okita were to be moved to Osaka, where Dr. Matsumoto was. Kondo had required serious surgery and treatment, while Okita needed to treat his tuberculosis. Only a few people had caught on to Okita's condition initially, but when it came time for him to leave, it was as if a dark cloud hovered over all of us. The departure of these two leaders brought solemnity and sadness to us all. Tensions were escalating in the Fushimi Magistrate. War could break out at any second. Since the chief had been shot, everyone seemed to be on edge at every corner. I guess, though, it can't be helped. Despite an intense investigation, no one could pin down a suspect. This only served to frustrate the soldiers further. Since coming to the magistrate, however, it seemed like the only way I could contribute was to make rice balls or yuzuke for the men to eat. But since everyone was constantly occupied or on the move, gathering a group to eat was hard. I found myself with nothing to do after cleaning up the kitchen after dinner. Yukimura? Oh, Yamazaki. I think this is another Zusoroku scene, if I'm not mistaken. A sharp voice came from behind me, and there stood Yamazaki in his ninja suit. Oh, you must have been out. Wow, you worked pretty late, huh? I had assumed he was performing his scout duties, looking for any sign of a culprit responsible for the attempt on Kondo's life. I bowed to him calmly. Forget about me. What's concerning me is you. Huh? Why are you still in Kyoto? This city will be a war zone soon. Yamazaki inhaled deeply, and he continued with a reserved expression. I figured you'd go with Chief Kondo and Okita to Osaka. I didn't think I'd need to say anything. I just assumed Commander Hijikata would ensure that you'd be a safe distance away. There was a hint of stress in his tone, and his exhaustion was coming through. Maybe the commander was too busy dealing with everything going on to worry about you. Perhaps that's the case. Since Kondo was shot, Hijikata has been all over the place. I nodded and he immediately resumed speaking in a serious tone. It isn't too late for you. You should catch up with Chief Kondo and leave for Osaka. If it's permission that you're waiting on before you leave, I can speak with the commander now. Th there's no need. I'll be fine. Of course it's not fine. He raised his voice, his frustration gaining. I understand what you may be feeling. You still haven't found Kodo, and you may want to remain in Kyoto and now you're being targeted by their so-called demons. And, of course, I know that the Shinsengumi has pledged to keep you safe. Yamazaki... I had never seen him in this infuriated state, let alone show this much emotion. But Kyoto will soon become a war zone. It is far too dangerous to remain here. Just from the way he'd been flailing his limbs and gesticulating, I could sense he was upset. It's really hard for me to imagine Yamazaki flailing his limbs. So it's true... We're going to war. 
I'd known it was coming, but now, word was finally on our doorstep. I muttered this to myself, and Yamazaki grabbed the hold of my shoulders as he responded. I'm almost certain some warriors may be keeping their hopes up, but... Well, for example, the Satsuma camp has been reported as already setting their cannons for a strike against the Fushimi magistrate. W what The Satsuma are running on high morale, whilst the Shogunate are relying on their numbers alone, so there's no telling how this battle may play out. The possible outcomes Yamazaki was describing were both pointing to one thing, devastation. I was sure that Yamazaki still held some hope that the Shogunate was superior to the Satsuma or the Choshu. However, because he'd witnessed their preparations firsthand as a scout, his perspective was better than anyone's. In addition, the Satsuma are armed with some of the most advanced weaponry I'd ever seen. I'm unsure of how our forces will deal with them. <sighs> Although I'm sure Yamazaki made an effort to comfort me, he was obviously shaken. However, in the end, we will be victorious. We have far more numbers. But even so, it's better to be safe than sorry. So it's best that you prepare to head for us up. Wait! Yamazaki was rushing through his attempt to convince me, but I interrupted him. I'm not the only one in danger here. Any one of us could be at any time. Besides, you of all people should be careful, considering you keep going into enemy lines. That's almost asking for danger to happen. Don't worry about me. But you, you have no need to be sucked up into a battle. Yamazaki smiled wryly before sighing deeply. Look, my job is to identify and nullify potential dangers that threaten the Shinsengumi. In the end, if I were to lose my life in the effort to keep allies safe, I'd consider it job done. What? Please don't give me that look. Since accepting my position as a member of the Watch, this is a commitment I've made with my own life. There was so much to say, but I couldn't collect my thoughts quick enough. Then, I became desperate to tell him something, but the words frothed as they struggled to come out of my mouth before... Then, why don't you go to Osaka, Yamazaki? Calm yourself, Yukimura. Why would I leave for Osaka? You're the Shinsengumi doctor, so you know everyone's condition better than anyone. His eyes grew wide in surprise as I continued. The men going to Osaka need your help too, Yamazaki. I want you to be beside Kondo and Okita more than anything too. I wanted him to know that he was worth more to us than just being a lookout in the city. I knew my voice was teetering on the edge of being irrational, but I had to tell him because I didn't want him to stay in a dangerous place. Immediately, Yamazaki began to calm down, and he responded in a peaceful tone. Dr. Matsumoto is waiting in Osaka. If they're going to be treated by anyone, he's the best fit. If your concern is about the chief or Okita, then I think it's even more reason for you to go. Well, you've been a massive help to me for a while, and I'm sure they could use your support. Besides, I'm a soldier and you aren't. Isn't it obvious you should stay? <sighs> His words tore through me. I dug my fingers into my hand as I gripped a tight fist, and I stared back into his eyes. I'm aware of what dangers await me, but even then, I still want to stay here. Because I'm scared to leave you. Being separated from the Shinsengumi is a lot scarier than being dragged into a war. All I'd think about is if everyone was okay, if they were safe or worse. If war breaks out, then I'm sure you guys will be in need of any help you can get. Although I may not look like much, I too can treat the wounded. <sighs> Yamazaki fell silent and I continued. Besides, if you're going out to fight Yamazaki, then even more reason for me to stay. I made a vow with you in the past that I'd watch over everyone when you're away. Yamazaki dropped his shoulders as he sighed, responding like he'd given up fighting. That's right. Just give in. I know where you're coming from, Yukimura. I can't stand it when my comrades are hurt either. That's why I chose to distract myself with tasks that took me away from everyone. Yamazaki. His smirk gleamed in my eyes, and my heart squeezed. I guess I'm putting you in the same position. But please, take care of everyone while I'm gone. Okay. I smiled in response, and he shared with me a small grin as well. Suddenly, Yamazaki closed the distance between us, holding me closer. 
If only a kiss came along with that. Why'd you pull down your mask if you're not going to kiss me? He unraveled the cloth around his mouth, and his eyes wrapped me with warmth by looking at me. You're strong. Huh? Yamazaki took my hand and muttered quietly. There aren't many who care about the Shinsengumi as deeply as you do. Only those who have seen death and know what it means to lose someone can understand the fear of losing someone they cannot live without. And yet, my dear... I sense those very feelings because of you. Something I never realized. Those feelings? Oh my. Yamazaki made perfect sense. I could only wonder, though, if I deserved to be worried about. I mean, is it okay for you to give me the honor of what you suggest? Don't be so modest. To me, I believe it is what's right. Yamazaki's words filled my chest with warmth, like fresh tea being poured gently into the cup. I can trust you to take care of my wounded comrades. However, to me, you are as precious a comrade as I've ever had. Uh. So please, don't push yourself too hard. Keep yourself safe. How could he say that to me? He's the one who's in danger the most. The thought didn't settle easily in my mind. But still, the fact he trusted me so heavily gave me an intense feeling of pride. Okay, understood. I nodded. Yamazaki nodded back in response, and he slowly loosened his grip on my hand. I'm going to report to Commander Hijikata on what occurred in my last round. So if your name comes up, I'll be sure not to say anything about where you are to be headed. Thank you so much, Yamazaki. I should be the one thanking you. After speaking with you, I feel so much better. You give me a peace of mind. So, thank you. He smiled timidly at me as he expressed his gratitude. If I had given Yamazaki peace, then... what he'd given me was meaning. He inspired me to believe that there was something I could do for the Shinsengumi. That I could be helpful to them, and it made me realize that there's no way I can let him down. Upon discovering that he accepted me for who I was, it made me confident, an unfamiliar feeling. No matter how uncertain the future could be for me, I was no longer scared to see what's next. And there we'll break. I believe I made that pretty long, but I was waiting for that point. <laughs> I wanted to finish the scene. So, hope to see you in the next episode to see exactly what we've got with him. Or I'd love to see you in some of my other videos. And I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me. And I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. Day really signing out. Bye-bye, everybody.